Hello everyone and welcome back to my video. Today we got a new question from Lucy Linkstad. I want to know how to blend pencil drawing. Mine looks worse when I try to blend. Do I have to use charcoal because I don't have it? Thanks. Well Lucy, I got you covered. Thank you so much for the question and no. You don't have to use charcoal in fact. In this drawing, I will be using only graphite and no charcoal. And before we go to the tutorial, I have an announcement. In my previous video, someone complained about my camera angle doesn't look straight. So actually, I chose to do this deliberately because when my camera is exactly on top of the paper, my hand will be obscuring the drawing. And you can't see my pencil or my eraser making contact with the paper, especially when I'm holding my pencil like this. So I chose to film it from a slight angle to mitigate this problem. But of course by doing this, the angle looks off. So I was thinking for a moment, and I've decided that I will keep filming from a slight angle angle and I will just fix the perspective in post. Hopefully it looks better now. So there's no other way guys. I'm so sorry if this is disappointing. I'm trying my best and I can't make everyone happy. It is what it is and this will have to do. So this video is in conjunction with my previous video. So last time I was talking about smooth shading. So after we do the shading then we need to blend it. If done correctly this will enhance the smoothness of the drawing. But if you don't know how or use the wrong tools, it actually can worsen the quality of your shading. So what I like to do here, because I'm not using willow charcoal or gravity powder here, I'll actually sketch the drawing first. So as you can see, I'm using my mechanical pencil to sketch, and I'm very careful not to press down too hard, because I don't want to indent the paper here. And after sketching the drawing, I then darken the shadow area using the same pencil, and I shade very lightly. Of course, the shading looks super rough and not smooth, so this is tool number one. I use a big, soft brush. You can also use cotton ball, they have the same effect. I use cotton balls on my older videos, and then I bought this big brush because when the cotton got dirty, I needed to throw it off, and I thought I was wasting money, whereas the brush I could just clean it off with water if it gets dirty. So this is after the blending, this is before, after, before, after. And you can see that the shading indeed looks nicer and softer. So next I'm gonna sketch my highlight with my needle eraser. And as you can see, because I shade very lightly, I can easily erase the drawing. And of course the drawing isn't perfect yet, but at least this on the drawing will help me so I don't feel like I'm painting blind. So now, moving on to the eye, and this is tip number two, is to move your hand slowly. Just like you can see in the video, I don't frantically move my pencil. I'm perfectly in control and I don't rush. Because when you do that, it means you're being impatient and the drawing won't look smooth. So be patient, draw slowly, and really focus on trying to fill every paper grain with graphite. And this is tip number three. I'm gonna switch to time lapse now because I want to show you the order I'm shading. So I begin sketching the eye using my mechanical pencil because I don't want it to be too dark right now. So if I end up making a major mistake or something, I could easily erase it. I start by rendering from the darker stock, the eyelid, pupil, eyebrow, and I also like to sketch the surrounding area, which is the hair. After I'm quite happy with the result, I darken the whole thing with my 8B. And to create a smooth shading, you need to maintain the pencil sharpness. The sharper it is, the easier it is to create a smooth shading. And then after I darken everything, this is tool number 2. I use a small brush. Just like the pencil, I move my hand very slowly. And I also don't push hard. The brush is actually quite small, and because it's small, the hair is short. So it's actually quite stiff, and that's what helps distribute the graphite. So I'll leave you guys with my real-time video. 
so you can see exactly what I'm doing, and I'll show you the before-after result in a moment. Okay, so this is after the blending, before, after, before, after, big difference there. And usually, I'll refine it in the final stage, but I want to show you the order of my workflow, so I don't stop with the blending. The blending tools won't make your drawing look perfect. You can actually make it even smoother by refining it with a kneaded eraser and a sharp pencil. If you see there is a darker spot, you reduce it with a kneaded eraser, and if you see something too light, or you want to reduce the paper grain, then you use your sharp pencil, and for this I love using my mechanical pencil. Okay, so before I move on to the other eye, here is the after refining, before, after, before, after. You can see that I've made some minor adjustments. I added shadow below the eyebrow to make it rounder, added shadow below the eyelid, and made the catch light crisper. They might look insignificant because it's just a small area, but when you finished refining the whole face, they're no longer small and will make your drawing look more refined. So now let's move on to the other eye. So to recap, my workflow is do the shading lightly using mechanical pencil. Start from the darkest dark, then darken it with a B, then blend it with small brush, then finish it off manually with kneaded eraser and mechanical pencil. I do this exact workflow throughout the drawing process. Okay, so moving on to the nose. Again, I use similar technique to when I did the eyes. So I start with my mechanical pencil and render the darkest dark first. And because there's not much dark area here, I use mostly my mechanical pencil and my knitted razor. And the value around the nose is actually quite faint. So just be careful when shading and remember not to press hard with the pencil. What helps me render the low faint value is to grip the pencil in a low angle and just let gravity do its work. I also like to use my big brush here. They're surprisingly good at producing really soft faint value. And because they're big, I can cover big areas quickly. And for the darker mid value, usually below the nose and the side of the nose, instead of darkening with my pencil, I prefer to use my small brush again, because the paper already has some graphite, so just by rubbing the brush like this will actually make the value go darker. Plus because I'm using a brush, the texture will appear very soft, so two birds in one stone. And again, I don't stop with my blending. After blending, I need to refine it using my kneaded eraser and mechanical pencil, darkening and lightening, back and forth until the drawing looks smooth. The mouth has the same workflow, although here, I don't really follow it strictly. The workflow is just merely a guide, or a checklist. So I always start from the dark stock, that's for sure. And then if you feel like you need to do some blending, then you can do that as well. Or if you want to blend at the very end, then it's fine too. The most important thing here is that you always want to finish off the drawing by smoothing it out manually, because the blending tool will only get you so far. And if you pay more attention, I like to render the surrounding area as well. So in this case, I like to render the hair, and that's even before I complete the mouth. This is because, one, I like to draw and try to finish one area at a time, so the surrounding area will act as boundaries. So I know I need to render only from this area to this area. And two, 
a Texas value comparison. So the hair area near the jaw is actually quite dark. So by rendering the darkest dark of an area, I can do comparison in my head. So for example, okay, so the darkest dark, which is the hair, is this dark. Then the lightest area is near the center of the jaw. So the mid value, I need to darken it this dark. So this way, my rendering is more effective, as I need less time to go back to my previous area just because it is too light or too dark as I misjudge the value. So next I'm going to render the rest of the drawing, the hair and the background. The hair and the background actually takes the most of my time here because obviously they are the biggest area of the drawing and as usual my background will be abstract. And don't worry guys, at this point you already know how I blend my drawing smoothly and you already know my workflow. So the hair and the background gets the exact same treatment. I think for my next tutorial I'll be talking about hair but I'm still not sure, probably need to do some YouTube research first, ha 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 ha. Hopefully the video answers your question, Lucy. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because that will encourage me to do more tutorial videos like this. So support my channel and if you have any question like Lucy did, just ask in the comment section down below. And enough ranting, and I'll let you guys watch my video and listen to my music.